Hi there, welcome to this video. I'm Dr. Fredrik Wallinder. Ever had the feeling that what you see around you is just an illusion, that there is much more than can be seen with your own eyes? Then you're absolutely right, but perhaps not in the way you think. To begin with, let's take a look at our galaxy, the Milky Way. We see a concentration of stars in the center and a rotating disk with a falling number of stars as we go outward. So we expect that stuff should move quickly near the center and more slowly further out, since the gravitational force decreases with distance to the center according to Newton's gravitational law. One good example of this is the planets moving around the sun. Now let's check out what observations tell us as regards the Milky Way. The dark red line is what we expect and the blue line is what's observed. The yellow dot represents our solar system which moves with a speed of 220 km per second around the galactic center. So why are stars and so on moving so fast in the outer region? Astronomers have suspected since the 1930s that there is invisible mass out there, producing enough gravity to get the stuff moving. That mass is called dark matter since no light is emitted from it. And yes, the dark matter should be present where you are right now. Other evidence of dark matter is the gravitational lensing effect. Here is a galaxy cluster which bends the light from galaxies further away into giant arcs. The effect grows with the lensing mass according to general relativity. So we can calculate the mass of the lens and subtract the mass that emits light, such as stars and so on. The rest is dark matter, and astronomers can use this information to make maps of where it is, even though it's invisible, and that, that's pretty cool. As an example, this picture shows what happens when two galaxy clusters collide. Normal gas in each cluster collides head-on and basically stops moving, whereas the dark matter in each cluster continues as nothing has happened. This event is probably the best evidence of dark matter so far, since it shows that dark matter does not interact with normal matter. If we add up all that normal matter, such as people, planets and stars, we find that it's only a very small part of what the universe is made of. According to cosmology, we have this distribution at present. All the atoms in stars and dust are about 5%. All the dark matter is 23%. The mysterious dark energy is 72%, but that's the topic of another video. That dark matter dominates over the baryons means that its gravity controlled where galaxies could form, since the gas assembled inside dark matter halos in the distant past, at least according to the standard picture. So knowing how the dark matter distribution changed can tell us something about the large-scale structure of the universe and its evolution. This video shows a supercomputer simulation of that process. And it could be that the most massive galaxies formed where the emerging filaments met each other, producing a high concentration of dark matter, and therefore good conditions for galaxy formation. The favorite dark matter candidate is probably the lightest supersymmetric particle called the neutralino, left over from the Big Bang. That particle is similar to the neutrino, which also leaves the particle detector unnoticed. It follows that it may be hard to see them in any accelerator experiment, for instance the Large Hadron Collider. So astronomers have gone underground and put up detectors in mines, where they are shielded from other particles coming from space. They hope to detect the dark matter wind generated as the Earth moves through the surrounding dark matter galactic halo. The final word is not in yet, but you can be pretty sure that whoever finds out what dark matter really is will get a very nice invitation from Stockholm. That's all for this video. Thank you very much for checking it out. If you want to get notified when the next video comes along, just subscribe to this channel. Thank you and goodbye.